I was initially going to use this video to deconstruct Simon Webb's rather strange version of the referendum of 2004 in Ireland. Um, and then it occurred to me, well, with Webb, there's really little points sometimes. I'll put links on it as to why I think it's uh, such a badly presented video and why he's presented in such a shallow way and why he's tried to leap from... Uh, Giant, you know, basically from one end of the universe in other end, extrapolate and back right. But it's really pointless in many ways. Webb knows he's doing it. But it occurred to me re listening to him. What's really worrying is the way he's used the video to actively misrepresent and smear two current Irish citizens. He's actually smeared them in a highly nasty way. And that perhaps is more serious than anything he's done in any other video. He's actually smeared two current Irish citizens who are well known, including a lady who's just come back from the Olympic Games. He's managed to throw a nasty smear into his video. Now, for a mo few seconds of context, and that's all I'm going to do, one, the 2004 referendum in Ireland, Simon, took place against the backdrop of the not too long ago at that point in time Good Friday agreements. And the Good Friday agreements featured a lot of back and forth about who was an Irish citizen, who wasn't an Irish citizen. And, and part of the articles led to a bit where it was basically written down that virtually anyone born on the island of Ireland was an Irish citizen. This led to the issue with women having babies from other countries there, which was actually a real issue. I'll give Simon that much. Michael McDowell, who I'm no fan of, um, pointed out at the time that probably 40 to 50% of births from people outside the EU you were to secure our citizenship. And much as I don't love McDowell for many reasons, he probably had a fair point. But McDowell has recently spoken about how you cannot use the events of 2004 to do massive generalizations about 2024. But I'm going to go through a few minutes of Webb's video, not all of it. I want to find the bit where he particularly has a smear campaign going on against two Irish citizens. And it's dodgy the way he's done that. This is really. Let's see if I can find this. Well, this idea had been in Britain before the law changed in 1983. Until that year, any child born in Britain automatically became a British citizen, regardless of the nationality of the parents. This was the loophole exploited by the mother of Conservative MP Kemi Badenoch, of course. In 1990, she... Well, but you really need to start checking your editing of what you're actually saying. Someone is using a... <sighs> a law that was deep made, repealed in 1983 in 1990, righto. I remember the law because it caused concern in the Irish and other diaspora communities in the UK. And I remember my parents argue whether it would mean whether they could still stay in Britain or not. As it turned out, it was a, an argument out of nothing because the Irish community is far too big and linked by far too many centuries for it and far too many family ties on both sides of the Irish Sea for it to really be the case of us all being pushed out. Flew to London specifically to give birth to the baby who grew up to be Kemi Badignock. Once a child was born and was therefore technically British, the mother flew back to Nigeria and Kemi Badignock had no more to do with this country until she was 16. This sort of thing became so widespread in Ireland in the late 19... Why are you using an, a law in England, uh, Simon? which was repealed in 1983, to discuss a situation that arose because of a change in the Irish constitution after the Good Friday Agreement for a few years. This is fuckwittery of the highest type, really. ...90s, that it ended up creating popular discontent at the number of Africans pulling the scam. The fastest man in Ireland, Israel Olatundi, became an Irish citizen in this way, as did the... No, he didn't. And this is an, an extremely unpleasant co comment to hear about a figure like that who is well known in Ireland and well respected as an athlete. Simon has just smeared that man. 
He's just basically smear the man. He's basically, if you didn't know he was he that he was on board in Ireland, you should have checked it, Simon, before you threw that out. But to make it worse, female Nigerian runner Razidat Adeleke. By the early years of the, you mean the female Irish runner? Thank you. You don't get to, yeah, she's one of us, thanks. You don't get me to tell me who my fellow Irish people are, thanks. I'll let you know when you can do that. Um, uh, but you've just accused her of the same thing. She's just come back from the Olympics, and I bet you you're doing it deliberately because she's popped up in the media, a lot with people going on like um, complete morons, to be frank, that she can't be Irish because she's black. Um, now, I was going to dismantle all the other contradictions and concerns but really that bit of the video shows the poor research the poor level of knowledge the concern the lack of concern with facts on its own it's enough to tell you what's really going on here without me doing that i will however include a number of links including a link to a paper given by michael mcdowell talking about this situation retrospectively links to the 27th Amendment of the Constitution and the 19th. Things that our so-called historian here does not. A so-called historian here, what did he give you? Let's see. Nothing. No links. Where's the citations? Where's the background information if you're a historian? Let's leave it there.